So we just pulled up to an off-grid project, and that's the only way into the job. Alright guys, so this is the tale of the off-grid swamp cabin install. Uh, this was a guy who purchased his material off the internet from one of those internet vendors that sells you the world, promises you the best kit ever, and then uh, you're supposed to find your own installer. So we talked about the job, probably 30 or 40 emails, text messages, phone calls. We'd come giving him a price and put him on the fill-in schedule, which is filler jobs if we come and do, you know, little little here and there jobs when Scott and I don't have huge projects going on. So we just driven about two or three hours, showed up at the job. I thought I had all our bases covered and, and knew all the things we needed. Well, we follow him uh, through like a series of locked gates uh, down a tight gravel driveway and he pulls into a clearing and we're looking around like, where's the house? And he gets out of his truck, comes up to my vehicle and says, okay guys, uh, get out of your trucks. Pulls a tarp off and shows us a lawnmower with a cart and says, I got to trailer your gear in from here. Well, we've got like tons of gear that we work, we work out of our trucks. We, we're doing a lot of different types of work here. So at this point, I can tell Scott and Abraham are about to punch me in the face. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy never once told me I can't get my vehicle back here. Uh, it looks like it's about to rain. The job's in a marsh, so we put on our muck boots and we're like, well, we might as well go check the job out. But this guy started this job off uh, by kind of tricking me, so this is the beginning of this story. The customer did not tell me, so we're a little bit bummed about that. We're going to see if we can make it work. So there's some good things about this job. He's already got everything marked out. There's some weird stuff, like we're like in a swamp, I like to move in a pine a swamp. I like to no access. This is a truly off-grid project. So we've got another pre-wired midnight panel. This one's flavor of the month is the Connect SW. See, we hung a little, put a little board up. That's an old Amish inverter trick. That's your one trick of the video. The big boss is. You're only giving them one trick, huh? Only one trick. Big Boss is working on the wiring. We're in rattlesnake country with another DIY, <laughs> DIY 3KW install. What's up, YouTubers? Wiring up a combiner. This is why they call it a combiner box. That's it up there. We've got it mounted on the wall. And this is the bus bar that comes with it. And what it does is it just you just take all the breakers and they, they bite onto the combiner bar. And then I just always tighten them down a little bit and then I mount them in there and tighten it down all the way but that's what combines the amperage of your circuits coming off your roof your PV circuits you series them to the voltage you want on the roof by connecting one panel to the other and then you bring each home run circuit from the roof into the bottom of this bus this uh, breaker it's got a positive on the bottom and a negative on the top because these breakers are polarity sensitive. Wherever the power is coming from needs to go into the bottom. And then this is a combiner box. What about that screwdriver? This is a uh, most popular screwdriver in America, folks. It's a Mega Pro 15 to 1. Just scre I screenshotted these out of uh, my phone, but these are just snippets from the MNPV6 and the Midnight Combiner manuals. Uh, the voltages and stuff may be a little old because they wrote these manuals a long time ago, but you can totally get the principle. And then there's what the uh, assembly looks like without any wires in it. So I strongly encourage you to look that up. Abraham and Antonio have got the uh, right, now wiring it. going here. We can and then we're going to put a piece of uh, unistrut on here to kind of use as a channel for the wires. And then we're going to push them right down this weather head just like a power company does, folks. Ain't nothing wrong with that. There wasn't as much water in the place. We're about to hang the panels. So here's the inside of one of these Midnight Connects load centers. It's fairly straightforward. Got some lightning arresters or surge protection devices on the bottom. One's wired into the PV bus bar, one's wired into the AC output, and one's wired into the AC input. There's your AC input and output. So this would be the kind of system you could, this thing's ready for 
Uh, it's pre-wired so that you can hang it on the wall, wire grid power or generator into it at 240 volts, and wire grid power out of it at 240 volts. This is that, uh, this is your bypass assembly and then your input, which I'll show you in a minute, but that allows you to bypass it, allows you to put good power generator in. These are your charge controller input and output breakers, and that's your battery main breaker. So pretty straightforward, and that's the inverter, and then uh, that's the charge controller. Here is exactly what I just showed you, but this is from the Midnight Manual. I encourage everybody to always look up the manual. This is a lot more straightforward than just trying to figure out where the wires are going. And uh, it's all available on the Let's website. The water storage tank. That big boss. Hello. <laughs> what do you got going on here? A little combiner? Oh, I got a little combiner. Just laying uh, my grounds and negatives. Now it's time to do me positives. That looks like some thick. Number 10. I know, it's huge. Is it 10 now? Yeah, it's just insulated to... It must be 1,000 volt or 2,000 volt or something. It's 10,000 volts and got yeah. so much insulation on it. So Scott's wiring up the combiner box. He's got the three positives from the three solar array strings coming down. Those are going to land on the bottom of the breaker. He's going to gingerly, yet skillfully, navigate past the bus bar. I, I tend and to then put, this one I'm going to put on this side just to keep them on separate sides. Okay. I tend to tape that bus bar up sometime. Because you're nervous about so it? I'm worried about it, Robin, when you go in the top. He's going to do it. And uh, Scott is going to be doing it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Scott's wiring up the combiner. I'm working on getting the battery puzzle done, and I'm going to take you up on the roof. So these guys are ready to do their... So make their solar hook up. We're just using Unistrut to protect the wire. That keeps you from having to derate your wire because it's it's going to dissipate heat. That's my hope there. Let's see what you code guys say. Okay, and then we're going to have to make a little jumper over here. So these are the flashings from Iron Ridge. There's their gasketed bolt. So that sucker goes down on top of it. Oh, so that little guy I just twists down on. Oh, no! I see no! There you go. No, no. Yep. There you go. Look at that. It sits right on. It's a slick little flashing. So there it is installed. Iron Ridge provides their cable clips. Iron Ridge is so prevalent in the industry. Definitely not my first choice for roof racking, but plenty strong, especially the way we've got it installed. Here's that Iron Ridge teardrop, famous teardrop rail profile. And um, this is what it looks like when you're about to do a old school, calling, calling charge controllers old school, but this is uh, pre-wired for a charge controller. This guy's gonna have to drop some trees, man. Right here. No. There's our, Where's our penetration. Box? There's our wood stove chimney. We didn't design this job, we're just doing the uh, install for the customer here. So here's that Connex SW pre-wired load center. It's not sunny today, but the battery's putting in a little, solar array's putting in a little bit. Let me go ahead and turn our battery breaker on. There we go. We got power in the house. This is the turbine wiring coming in. And then we got a stop switch for the prime wind power, so the hot for the turbine from the turbine comes in right here. The negative for the turbine hits the battery bus bar and then there's another negative coming off of the it goes to one side of the swap stop switch. So that's the negative off the battery. So the stop switch enables you to like break the turbine and then that's going to the positive. And this is off grid getting it done here. Batteries. He's gonna vent this room later on. This, uh, that's one string of batteries, 24 volts, so there's 6 volts, so it goes 6, 12, 18, 24, and that's my negative, that's my positive, then this is another string, 6, 12, 18, 24, you can see I got both my negatives paralleled right there, both my positives paralleled right there, 
I got my inverter cable, that's the inverter cable. I got it hooked onto the positive of this string. And I have my negative inverter cable hooked onto the negative of that string. So that causes me to draw down both banks and charge up both banks equally. If I had hooked the inverter cables both onto there, then this cable or this string would get unequal charging. So that kind of explains the parallel wiring to it. Here is a Primus Air 40X. Isn't that a 400 watt turbine? Yeah, I think so. I almost said something bad. <laughs> Don't you say. On YouTube. Abraham's giving her the, the old wire up. Giving the old south wire. We're going to tilt this sucker up. And then we've got guy wires coming off of it. And uh, this will give you some battery charging. In windy conditions, that's one of the guy wire anchors. I really can't say enough good things about this ladder standoff we've been using. It protects the roof and makes the ladder super stable. So here's our finished solar array. There's our unistrut and our wire going into the unistrut. So that just keeps that wire protected going across the roof. Keeps you from running pipe everywhere. Looking good. He's definitely going to want to drop some trees. <sighs> There's the panels. I thought we were just going to bolt it to the outside of the house. Yeah. Three, two, one. Hey, folks, we're getting a little wet today. We're going to put up a Air 40, Primus Air 40 wind turbine. For those that don't like when I say wind turbine, we're going to put that up today. So, what we're doing is making sure it works before we set it up. So, we're using, we got to be very careful because the left hand is red. But to see if we're making any power. Oh, easy. I'm gonna go clamp it. So, zero out your clamp meter. So we're charging right now, right, Johnny? Hold on. Some zeroing it out. There's the clamp in the wire. I get the phones. So there we are. See, it's. There it goes, stopped. Hi, I'm Johnny Valentine with Gordon's Fish. <laughs> and when I'm not just selling uh, quality fish, I'm doing off-grid jobs. Antonio, the customer trying to get everything out. So this job is in the middle of nowhere, and I'm sure all you guys in Canada and wherever you are where it's just totally remote are going to laugh at me. But... We're having to walk in on this muddy trail and uh, show you this project. Just a little off-grid job this guy ordered. All the parts and uh, we're putting it in for him.